On the breakfast, the Nigerian Labour Congress has called for the reversal of private ownership and control of the electricity sector. We we'll look at the reasons behind this as we speak to a representative of the NLC in Lagos State. Also on the breakfast, politician and philanthropist Ten Jack Rich is calling for the admission of Nigeria into the G20 economic group. But is Nigeria ready and qualified to be admitted to this elite group of nations? And in Off the Press, we'll bring you an in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. Well, it's a beautiful day, and thank you for joining us uh, on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Ebopo. As always, we start the show with a top trending conversation. Top trending would mean that we're looking at issues that has uh, generated a lot of reactions from different quarter, quarters and, um, you know, what's getting a lot of people talking, what are Nigerians talking about. So uh, first on the list for us this morning is that the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority has uh, accused members of the Tricycle Owners Association of Nigeria of attacking its officers, or an officer actually, with dangerous weapons while they were on official duty in Ojota, that's a part in Lagos State. The Director of Public Affairs and Enlightenment uh, of Enlightenment Department, Adebayo Tafik, said that weapons were used against its officer and included cutlass, iron, broken bottles, and local charms. Uh, the agency also revealed that one of the officers was injured in the left eye and was, uh, you know, he had broken with broken bottles by the attackers and had been admitted at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital in Ikeja. Well, he, he also stated that the general manager of the agency uh, confirmed the matter and had been reported to the H command of the Nigerian police force in Ogudu, while efforts were on to identify and arrest those who took part in the unwarranted attack. Uh, he said that we're searching for the attackers with information to gather so far by our intelligence unit to ensure that all of this, you know, uh, these persons who have done this will be brought to face justice to be made for the face of law. But it's also unfortunate. First of all, we must say this is unfortunate. And, and that's because before you are a LASMA official, but before you are anything, before you are whatever it is that you are, a medical doctor or you know, president or governor, you're a human being. And that's, that's the first thing. Very um, important. Violence of any sort, of any kind, is not acceptable. Two wrongs can never make a right. That's what it is. Even though, if you, if you look at the comment, because this is also being made public, especially on Twitter. Yeah, there's also a tweet to that press release. And I, I have read some of the comments. I'd like to go through a bit of them uh, for you to see what Nigerians or some people are talking about and how they feel about this incident. But like I rightly mentioned, violence is violence and it can never be supported. You can't have you... Uh, because someone did X, Y, Z, and so we should do this. It's like taking the laws into your hand, and that's not, you know, acceptable. So um, some some of the tweets and the conversation, you have this one saying, with different reactions from people, it shows it shows your men on the road are not good, of good conduct. Fix this, everyone is talking bad of them. So it, it feels like, hey, you deserve what you actually, uh, LASMA is also uh, getting a piece of the pie, or a taste of your own medicine, and, and like I rightly mentioned, that's not acceptable. Another tweet says, violence begat violence. I will never forget the day last month officials extorted 20,000 from me in Ikeja while I was going to hospital to treat myself. I literally know what it can be without them. Uh, as much as evil is committed, it's not good and it's condemnable. You guys uh, have met your equals until I hear the other side of the story. Meanwhile, I kept swearing for Una, for all the money Una don't collect from me, you know? Uh, so the, the reaction, the expression from Nigerians have not been uh, the same, really. People feel different about LASMA, and they have reacted differently, but seriously, 
You know, it's like a toot for a toot. But we need to do better as a people. And that's why in the course of discharging our duties, uh, whether you're a police officer, whether you're a military officer, a DSS, whatever it is, whoever you are, the most important thing is that you, you know, discharge your duty in respect, in accordance with the modus operandi of your organization or agency. And which, of course, I know that there's no agency that wakes up and states violence or saying, hey, you have to treat people like animals in the course of discharging your duty. And that's what we constantly preach. You need to understand that everyone is a human before they are the next you know, thing, whatever it is that they may be. So in our dealings, in the course of discharging your duty, it's important that you treat them with respect. And we find a way you know, to um, implement the law. We can't be forceful, acting irrational acting very rascal, using, we've seen situations where those who are supposed to implement the law are acting, you know, very contrary to what it should be, right? But it's also not um, a plus. It's not also saying this is very good. It's totally unacceptable. And I hope that uh, the case that has been reported to the police, uh, the police authorities would actually um, find out those responsible for this attack and they will be made to face justice. However, let's quickly move away from that. We have another top trending, Taraba Speaker Kunini uh, resigns and Kazito takes over. It's a big one. The Speaker of this uh, Taraba State House of Assembly resigned on Wednesday. Uh, that was yesterday. The House immediately elected a member representing the Zing constituency uh, John Kazito as a new speaker. Uh, Kunini was elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party in 2019. Of course, his letter of resignation uh, reads in part. He said, uh, he read it on the floor actually of the House, and he said to everyone uh, that might be surprised uh, there was no form of uh, skirmishes among members of the House. My resignation is on personal ground, and I wish to thank honorable members for their support and cooperation while I served as Speaker of this Honorable House. But you see, I, th I think that the reason why a lot of people are talking about this and Nigerians are reacting, and there's been several reactions to this, is that we, we don't live in a society and a climate where it's very easy for you to have public officials or government elected officials wake up and resign. And as much as it's stated in the letter that, yes, this is on personal grounds, uh, Nigerians have reacted differently to that. And they're saying, no, that's not possible. It probably would have been under duress from the executive arm of government, uh, which seemed to be very powerful in our democracy. So yes, when you have, um, whether it's at the federal level or at the state level, you have different states in the country, 36 including the FCT, and so this executive or this governor has become so powerful and anything can actually happen. Uh, what is actually, why, why people are talking about it, like I rightly mentioned, is that people don't seem to believe that anyone can wake up and say, hey, um, I'm taking a walk, I'm stepping down. We, Nigerians think that we haven't gotten to that time. Uh, we haven't been very developed. You know, people's moral compass and uh, values have not got into that point where someone wake up and say, hey, you know, as a governor, I just wake up and say, you know what, I'm stepping down. And that's on personal grounds because I think I haven't been able to do X, Y, Z. So, yes, uh, the reaction continues and people are talking about it, uh, that he probably would have been under duress. But whatever the case is, let's see how he pans out, you know, for Taraba State, as long as, you know, the interest of the people is still upheld and he, the interest of the people is protected. That's what's very important. Now, just before we uh, move away from a top trending, the London court again has denied Ikur Madu uh, bail. You remember the former Senate president, Ike Ikur Madu. Uh, the Central Criminal Court in London has denied the former deputy Senate president, Ike Ikur Madu, uh, bail. Now, the court, which is also known as Old Bailey, in a pre-trial hearing on Tuesday gave its verdict denying the bail on the grounds that Ikur Madu will flee the country. So it's also another issue, issue of integrity, issue of morals, <laughs> issue of what it is. It's a character issue. And I don't even know if, if, if Ikura Madu um, was not a Nigerian, if he were from another part of the world, would he be um, granted this bill, the bill application? 
will the reason for refusal be that he will not flee? Or, you know, would, would that really um, honor all of that? But you see, what's applicable in Nigeria and what's applicable in Ghana, two different things. And in other parts of the world, so the laws actually vary. But however, in the bail application, the court matters lawyer had argued that the Nigerian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and the Attorney General of the Federation had written to the court that Ekorimadu was not a flight rigs or fact rigs. Uh, the lawyer had further argued that uh, to guarantee, further argued that a guarantee to produce himself should be, uh, should not pose a fight rigs and was given that the Nigerian High Commission in the United Kingdom had given the option of tagging Ekorimadu electronically to monitor his movement. So um, we know that respected Nigerians and organization and lawyers had also argued that uh, the lawmaker had to prove, had proven to be caring and very responsible father and could not escape from London, abandoning his wife and his sick daughter. But you know, it wasn't the case. However, uh, it's quite unfortunate because the defense for the, uh, told the court that they had uh, shorties and security of nearly half a million pounds uh, which came from 11 people to secure Koromada's release on bail. But, you know, it's on the grounds that they don't trust him, the thing that he would just move away, he would run, he would flee. And so that's it. Well, we will continue to, you know, monitor and, uh, of course, bring you up to date with what's making the rounds in case of the, in, in the case of Koromada and uh, all that is going on with that particular case. Well, that's so much we can take at this point in time. We take a break and when we return, we'll be looking through the pages of the National Dailies, we call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.